Command Sergeant Major Eric Oaks, welcome to the United States Army Training Center in Fort Jackson for the retirement review of two soldiers and graduation of companies A, B, C, D, and E from 3rd Battalion, 39th Infantry Regiment, 165th Infantry Brigade. Please stand for the invocation given by Chaplain Kia Humphrey. Please join me in a moment of prayer. Blessed be the Lord my rock, who trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle. Great God, I thank you for this wonderful day that you've allowed us to see, and we thank you for every family member who is present to celebrate with us. We thank you for every soldier who's standing on the field who just arrived a few weeks ago as a civilian, but who will leave here today as one of the newest members of the United States Army. We pray for our drill sergeants today who have poured out tirelessly over these last few weeks and who only have a short little time before they have to do this cycle all over again. We ask that you would give them strength today. We pray for protection over our soldiers as they travel to AIT. We ask that you would cover them and keep them safe. Lord, bless the remainder of this ceremony. It's in Jesus' name that I pray, amen. Please be seated. The purpose of today's ceremony is to recognize the commitment of the men and women you see here who have chosen to serve their country as soldiers. This review is the last official formation in the careers of two lifelong soldiers and for our newest soldiers. Not everyone successfully completes this difficult period of training. Far fewer are able to accept the challenges and difficulties that come with the life of a career soldier. But those in formation today represent disciplined, motivated, physically fit soldiers who exemplify the Army's seven core values, loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity, and personal courage. They are imbued with the warrior ethos and display the tenets of putting the mission first, never accepting defeat, never quitting, and never leaving behind a fallen comrade. This is an important day and these soldiers can take great pride in their accomplishments. To the parents, families, and friends of these soldiers, Fort Jackson extends a very warm and sincere welcome. We are justifiably proud of our retirees' lifelong dedication to our nation and are truly honored that the next generation standing on this field have chosen to join our ranks. Please direct your attention to the left of the formation. The units marching today from your left to right are the 282nd Army Band under the command of First Sergeant David Newcomb, graduating soldiers from companies A, B, the Battalion Color Guard, and graduating soldiers from companies C, D, and E. Identified by their distinctive headgear are the drill sergeants. These dedicated non-commissioned officers form the backbone of the Army's training system, selected based on professional competence, leadership ability, and years of service. These men and women undergo intensive training to earn the right to wear their distinctive hat and insignia. With the drill sergeant hat goes the important responsibilities of molding civilian men and women into soldiers. The commander of troops for today's ceremony is Major Philip Turner who serves as the executive officer for the 3rd Battalion, 39th Infantry Regiment. He and the battalion staff are positioned on the field. The reviewing officer for today's graduation is the commander of the 3rd Battalion, 39th Infantry Regiment, Lieutenant Colonel James R. Malico. On his left is Command Sergeant Major James Cox. The battalion, the battalion senior non-commissioned officer, master trainer, and principal advisor to the commander. Commander of Troops will now bring forward the colors and persons to be honored.
Competence and commitment are the hallmarks of professionalism. The soldiers and drill sergeants coming forward will be recognized for their excellence in training and duty performance and serve as examples to all. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the playing of the national anthem. It is appropriate for soldiers in uniform and all armed force veterans to salute the American flag. We ask our civilian guests to please remove your headgear and place your right hand over your heart as our national anthem is played. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, you are about to witness the retirement of a lifelong soldier. All soldiers begin their journey by graduating from basic combat training. Over the years, there have been changes to how the Army conducts basic training. However, many things remain the same. It was during basic training that these two soldiers were first introduced to the Army values. It is where they learned the importance of teamwork and that the Army truly is a family. That sense of team and Army family is still embedded in the, what is done here today. Over 20 years ago, these soldiers took the same oath to defend this nation that your loved ones on the field have taken. We salute these great soldiers as they pass the torch of freedom along to the newest generation of soldiers, your loved ones standing on the field today. A certificate of appreciation from the President of the United States is presented to those retiring today. It reads, I extend to you my personal thanks and the sincere appreciation of our grateful nation for the contribution of honorable service to our country. You have helped maintain the security of the nation during critical times in its history with a devotion to duty and a spirit of sacrifice in keeping with the proud traditions of the military service. I trust that in the coming years, you will maintain an active interest in the armed forces and the purpose for which you serve. Those who follow in your footsteps will draw inspiration from your commitment dedication, and sacrifices made to ensure the protection of our American freedoms. My best wishes to you for happiness and success in the future. A, a certificate of retirement from the Chief of Staff of the Army is also presented to those retiring today 
and to the spouses of today's retirees from the Chief of Staff of the Army. The certificate reads as follows. On the occasion of the retirement of your spouse from active status with the United States Army, you have earned grateful appreciation for, our for your unselfish, faithful, and devoted service. Your unfailing support and understanding helped to make possible your spouse's lasting contribution to the nation. At this time, Brigadier General Kelly and Command Sergeant Major Oaks will recognize our retirees for their service to the United States Army. First Sergeant Wade Tripp, having served honorably for 23 years of service, is placed on the retirement list effective 1 January 2024. First Sergeant Wade entered active duty in Chesterville, Maine, and will reside in Clarksville, Tennessee upon retirement. His fondest professional achievement is hearing the impact he made on the lives and careers of his soldiers. The nation salutes. Wade Tripp, First Sergeant, United States Army, retired. First Sergeant Robert Gordon, having served honorably for 20 years of service, is placed on the retirement list effective 1 November 2023. First Sergeant Horton entered active duty in Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania, and will reside in Columbia, South Carolina upon retirement. His fondest professional achievement is being a part of training and mentoring over 4,000 new soldiers into the Army during his four years as a company first sergeant on Fort Jackson. The nation salutes. Robert Horner, First Sergeant, United States Army, retired. Please join us in a round of applause for our retirees and their families. Although newly retired, they will always be a part of our Army family. The soldiers most responsible for the training of these soldiers are the drill sergeants who are carefully selected by the Department of the Army. The drill sergeant campaign hat and badge have been a stoic symbol of professionalism and pride since 1962. At this time, the Drill Sergeant of the Cycle for 3rd Battalion, 39th Infantry Regiment, Drill Sergeant Vargas, will recite the Drill Sergeant Creed. We ask that all Drill Sergeants, past and present, please stand for the reciting of the Drill Sergeant Creed. I am a Drill Sergeant. I would assist each individual in their effort to become a highly motivated, well-disciplined, physically and mentally fit soldier capable of defeating any enemy on today's modern battlefield. I will still pride in all I train, pride in self, in the army, and in country. I will insist that each soldier needs to maintain the army standards of military bearing and courtesy, consistent with highest traditions of the U.S. Army. I will lead by example, never requiring a soldier to attend any task that I would not do myself. But first, last, and always, I am an American soldier, sworn to defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, both foreign and domestic. I am a drill sergeant. This will defend. Ladies and gentlemen, Lieutenant Colonel Malico and Command Sergeant Major Cox will now present the awards.
The outstanding drill sergeant of the cycle is Drill Sergeant Joshua Vargas from Carolina, Puerto Rico. The soldier leader of the cycle for Alpha Company is Specialist Devin Hamrick from Swatton, Maryland. The soldier of the cycle for Alpha Company is PFC Austin Blackwell from Fayetteville, North Carolina. The soldier leader of the cycle for Bravo Company is Specialist Matthew Hoffman from Review, Florida. The soldier of the cycle for Bravo Company is Specialist David Gallego from Tucson, Arizona. The soldier leader of the cycle for Charlie Company is PFC Mark Gomez from San Antonio, Texas. The soldier of the cycle for Charlie Company is PFC Corey Catamura from Nashville, Tennessee. The soldier leader of the cycle for Delta Company is PFC Austin Pickney from Charleston, South Carolina. The soldier of the cycle for Delta Company is PFC Joshua Wengerin from Froth, Georgia. The soldier leader of the cycle for Echo Company is Private Jaron Templeton from Phoenix, Arizona. The soldier of the cycle for Echo Company is PFC Ryan Sharpless from Coatesville, Pennsylvania. The NCO of the cycle is Sergeant Greg Geyer from St. Louis, Missouri. The soldier of the cycle is Corporal Reginald Seabury from Orangeburg, South Carolina. The civilian of the cycle is Miss Teresa Brown. Ladies and gentlemen, the commander of the 3rd Battalion, 39th Infantry Regiment, Lieutenant Colonel James Malico. Good morning, Brigadier General Kelly, Command Sergeant Major Oaks, CSM Blyler, AAAO families and friends here on Fort Jackson, as well as those tuned in via live stream. Thank you for attending your soldiers' graduation. I also want to say a special thank you to the 282nd Army Band on the field at the left of the formation. Thank you for keeping the battalion in step this morning. For over 100 years, Fort Jackson has helped forge America's warrior class as the Army's premier training center transformed civilians into disciplined, physically and mentally tough, professional American soldiers. And it does so here at the rate of almost 45,000 per year well over half of the Army's annual requirement. 
Today, that tradition continues as we graduate this class of 575 triple AO soldiers. Through the professionalism and dedication of our drill sergeants and cadre, victory truly does start here. The United States has remained a free nation because we have people in this country who are willing and able to answer the nation's call. To all past and present soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, and Coast Guardsmen here and watching online, we thank you for your service. Thank you. If you are a veteran or retiree attending today's ceremony, please stand as you are able. Soldiers standing in front of you today represent a small portion of the military-aged residents of the United States. However, not everyone can serve. In fact, less than one in four are physically, mentally, and morally eligible to serve in our armed forces. And in the end, only one in 100 ever does. Ladies and gentlemen, standing on the field today is that one percent. They. They represent our nation's best. They come from big cities like New York, Los Angeles, and Chicago. And other, and other cities such as Lakeland, Florida, Opelika, Alabama, as well as small rural towns from across the nation. They come from foreign countries like South Korea, Pakistan, the Philippines, Brazil, and Germany. 49 of 50 U.S. states, two U.S. territories, and 11 different countries are represented by these soldiers standing here today. Of the 575 soldiers standing in formation, the youngest of them is 17 years old, and the most senior is 40 years old. Many of them have advanced degrees, left other jobs, or joined from other services. Fifty-three courage-worthy soldiers have associate's degrees, 32 have bachelor's degrees, and nine of them have a master's degree. One hundred and seventy-one of them have family members who have served. These soldiers standing here today are the guardians of our future. They're part of that long line of warriors who've committed themselves to supporting and defending the Constitution of the United States of America. Your soldiers standing here this morning represent everything that is good about this nation. They are professionals of the highest order and are trained, educated, and committed to upholding the Army values. All of them raised their hands and volunteered many for different reasons, some because of family tradition, some seeking challenges, some to simply serve. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter why they joined. What matters is that they did. It's a selfless person who commits themselves to serving the people of the United States, standing guard between us and the enemies of our nation. This is the life of the American soldier, securing the future for generations to come. In a moment, you'll hear him recite the soldier's creed. Listen closely, and you'll hear him say, I am a guardian of freedom in the American way of life. Their pledge to you as a U.S. soldier is that they'll never quit, never falter, and never give up. To the soldiers of 339, 10 weeks ago, 626 civilians arrived in our battalion area, and today, 575 soldiers have met the Army standard and earned the right to be called soldier. You arrived at Fort You arrived at Fort Jackson as individuals, but you leave as members of the Army team. 
We are proud of you. From Sergeant Major Cox and I and all of your drill sergeants and cadre, congratulations. You are American soldiers and proud members of our Army team. Good luck to you all. Triple AO, strike strong, and victory. Today's soldier is, above all, a warrior, adaptive, confident, and competent. As a soldier, you are totally committed to the warrior ethos, grounded in Army values, and, and determined to destroy enemies of the United States of America and her allies. The United States Army Soldiers Creed embodies this commitment. To the soldiers on the field, the uniform you wear at this moment is more than an outward display of your vocational choice. Your uniform is a symbol of a nation and an unspoken assurance to all who see that you are a willing and able protector of the freedoms fought so arduously for by all who have gone before and those who will bravely come after. You have, come, you have become what you have set out to be, a soldier in the United States Army. The Soldier's Creed is your declaration of your unshakable commitment to the ideals this nation was founded upon and will continue to guarantee. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand as Private Templeton presents a certificate of appreciation to the retirees and leads the soldiers standing before you through the reciting of the Soldier's Creed. In consideration of those around you, we ask that you please remain seated in the bleachers until all soldiers have passed the review and stand and the conclusion of the ceremony is announced. As you are approached by the American flag, it is appropriate to rise and remain standing until it has passed to your right. Once the ceremony has concluded, family members of awardees may meet their soldier under the canopy located to the left of the bleachers. All other family members and friends, please meet your soldiers on the field once instructed by the narrator by your respective companies.
constituted 15 May 1917 in the regular army as Company C, 39th Infantry, organized 1 June 1917 at Syracuse, New York. 39th Infantry assigned 19 November 1917 to the 4th Division. Inactivated 21 September 1921 at Camp Lewis. Relieved 15 August 1927 from assignment to the 4th Division and assigned to the 7th Division. Relieved 1 October 1933 from assignment to the 7th Division and assigned to the 4th Division. Relieved 1 August 1940 from assignment to the 4th Division and assigned to the 9th Division. Later redesignated as the 9th Infantry Division. Activated 9 August 1940 at Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Inactivated 30 November 1946 in Germany. Activated 15 July 1947 at Fort Dix, New Jersey. Inactivated 1 December 1957 at Fort Carson, Colorado. And relieved from assignment to the 9th Infantry Division. Concurrently redesignated as headquarters and headquarters company, 3rd Battle Group, 39th Infantry. Redesignated 1 February 1966 as headquarters and headquarters company, 3rd Battalion, 39th Infantry, assigned to the 9th Infantry Division and activated at Fort Riley, Kansas. Inactivated 25 September 1969 at Schofield Barracks. Activated 21 July 1972 at Fort Lewis, Washington. Inactivated 21 January 1983 at Fort Lewis, Washington. And relieved from assignment to the 9th, Division, 9th Infantry Division. Headquarters transferred 3 April 1987 to the United States Army Training Doctrine Command and activated at Fort Dix, New Jersey. Passing the reviewing stand is the commander of troops, Major Philip Turner and the battalion staff. The 282nd Army Band is commanded by First Sergeant David Newcomb, Drum Major and Staff Sergeant Graham Hutchison. 